this, this is how you increase your average order value and make your customers more valuable to you. Also, to sell them more stuff, don't ever just sell someone one thing. What other products could we potentially cross sell them on a product page? What would go along with a shirt like this is taking the opportunity to cross sell them additional products. We are live in full effect. What's up, Ecom Hackers? Welcome to another episode of Ecom Hacker TV. If you are looking for simple yet powerful ways to increase your traffic, conversions, sales, build a bigger, more respectable brand, you absolutely need to watch today's episode of Ecom Hacker TV. I am breaking down and reviewing six different stores in multiple industries, your stores, by the way, all right? We're gonna break them down and give you actionable strategies that you can take and use on your store today to help you get uh, better results. Honestly, no matter what you're selling and make sure you watch all the way to the end because as we go through, I'm gonna be plugging different free resources that we can send your way to help you get better results from pretty much every piece of your online selling operation, right? So make sure you're watching all the way through. For those of you that are new here, you haven't been on a session like this before, I'm Mike Ayo. I'm a partner Alyssa on the line as well, right? And this is kind of what I do, right? I have a couple of different e-com brands. Uh, you know, maybe I'll show you better than I tell you. Yeah, right? So we kind of have a couple of different e-com brands here, right? I have my air freshener brand where we sell air freshener incense, All right? I have a supplement, All right? A pain relief supplement called Seymour Life. With this air freshener brand, did what? Little over $400,000 in sales last year. That's just from Shopify, right? That does not include our sales on Amazon where we did a little over 300K on Amazon. And it definitely doesn't include any of what we do wholesale wise either, right? And then with this pain relief supplement, we do close to $20,000 a month with this brand as well, right? So I'm not showing you this to brag or anything like that. I'm showing you guys this so that you understand I actually live this life every day. Like I get pissed if we do less than 50K with this air freshener brand a month, right? And today what I'm breaking down for you guys is ways to really juice your numbers, right? A lot of what I'm talking to you guys about today is going to have to do with things like your conversion rate, right? Out of 100 people, how many are buying, right? Very, very important. Your average order value, right? My air freshener, this stuff is like six bucks a bottle. My average order value is over 30. How are we doing that? I'm going to talk to you guys about ways to get your average order value up, right? Make your customers that much more valuable, right? I'm going to talk to you about the holy grail of repeat business, right? Getting folks in the bank month after month so they keep coming back and continue to do business with you on a regular basis, right? Building that brand that so many of you guys, you know, really got into it to, to build. And then, of course, right? traffic, which is the sexy thing all the gurus talk about, but maybe one of the least important elements when it comes to your success. And when you understand how traffic really works, you'll understand why I say that, right? So again, all these things combine to give you the sales that you're looking for. And today we're going to be dropping bombs, value bombs that are going to help you lift all these different numbers up so you can get more of what you want. Does that sound good? You guys ready to dive on in, right? If you have been on one of these live streams before, you know what I'm about to ask you to do. Make sure you like the stream, right? So more folks in the group will see it and make sure you drop that fire emoji in the chat, whether you're watching it live, whether you're watching a replay, drop the fire emoji in the chat. So I know that you're ready for these value bombs that we're about to drop and we can go ahead and get on started. 
So, Alyssa, who are we starting with today? Absolutely. So I was really happy to see what was picked in the drawing so far, but right now we have saltwater redneck. So this is print on demand. You see some cool designs in here. But what they have is different design shirts. Looks like if you're going to be on the water, this is what you want. Hats, visors, shirts, everything really for being out in the sea and doing your thing. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Let's go ahead and dive right on in there. Now, for those of you that sell uh, apparel designs, right, whether it's print on demand or whether it is, you know, designs that you are pressing yourself. Uh, with your own equipment, it's important to understand that you are des a designer first, right? A designer first. And the biggest thing that is going to really impact your sales, especially when we're talking about advertising, is do those designs make your ideal customer raise their hand and say, hey, that's me, right? So a name like Saltwater Redneck, I mean, <laughs> that kind of speaks to a certain person, but the key is, do our designs also speak to them? Because that's how you're going to get someone in the door. So let's go ahead and dive right on in and break a couple of things down. All right. So first and foremost, the number one thing that you pay attention to whenever you are trying to optimize your store to get a higher conversion rate, right? You have to understand how shoppers operate online, right? Everything happens above this section here. We call this the fold, right? It's been called the fold for over 100 years has to do with newspapers, right? A newspaper used to have to sell based off the headline image, the headline story, right? Do you catch my attention right now? Why? Because you have people walking by. It had to capture their attention enough so they would at least pick it up. Nobody was reading the paper. Very few people were unfolding the paper. You literally sold that paper that day based off what they saw above the fold. Online is the same thing. 80% of people will not scroll down. So you have to capture their attention right away. And you do that in a couple key areas, right? Here and here. So when we're talking about up here, these are your store aisles, right? Someone discovers your brand for the first time, whether they land on a product page, whether they land on a home page. The first thing they do is people read in an F. So they're reading like this. Your navigation is important. These are your store aisles. Hey, what do you carry? Do you have something that I'm going to be interested in? Right? So I do like that we say, okay, we have hats, shirts, sweatshirts, right? So it does give us some clarity in regards to what we sell. Instead of saying something like catalog, which is nebulous, right? Catalog, you would be better served by using that tab to highlight best sellers right? You just arrived on your store. Hey, what are people buying? Direct them to your best sellers to get the maximum amount of people coming over there. Contact is, again, think in terms of people read from left to right. Contact is less important as the first thing here. You can either move that to the end of your navigation, or you can move that down to your footer. The people that are going to contact you are not necessarily looking up here for that type of information, right? They've been to your store before. They wanna get in contact with you before making a purchase, right? So this is not the best place to put information like that, right? Again, footer or towards the back. And then that way we can maybe get all this stuff on one line. So that way we can lift our primary um, real estate section higher, right? Now, here's where we really have some opportunity. So, we have this image. It shows the C, but does it really give us any indication of what we're selling here, what someone might find here, right? We have the term saltwater redneck, and then it says shop all. Shop what? What am I clicking? Why would I click that, right? So instead of having kind of like imagery and then the name of your store, which is also right up here, let's use this section to highlight what makes our brand special, what we're selling, right? Is it, you know, a premium apparel for those that live at the sea? Or like, right, the, you want to call out your, your ideal audience and then drive them to, say, a best seller's option, right? Again, 
50, 80% of people are not gonna scroll down. So they're either gonna click something up here in our navigation, or the vast majority of them are going to click right here if you give them a reason to, or not. So again, I would definitely remove the name of our brand here. That's not necessarily speaking to our target audience. Change this image around to reflect what we actually sell here, right? And then use this description section to talk about what we're carrying, who it's for. And then when we say shop all, maybe give them some clarity, shop our best sellers, shop our new arrivals. Or again, you can dedicate a section like this to say your current promotion. Maybe you're running a summer sale, right? On all your t-shirts, right? Summer sale, t-shirts 25% off, shop t-shirts, right? So make sure that we're using this section to herd traffic, right? Herd the maximum amount of people from point A to point B. Again, when you guys are looking at your conversion rate and you're trying to understand what all these numbers mean, right? The whole point is to get someone from one bucket to the next bucket to the next bucket, all right? The job of the homepage, get them to the collection, collection, get them to the product page, product page, add to cart, add to cart, checkout, buy. Always think in terms of that. This is a major opportunity here to get folks moving. Because again, you're talking to a pretty clear uh, audience, right? When it comes to just images like this, right? You'll find that when you use lifestyle images, images with like backgrounds, images where it's on a model, or even images where you see like a, a combination of the, the shirt. Maybe you see like the shirt and like shoes or a shirt and like a leaf, right? It adds life to your images, right? When you just have these kind of mock-ups, or just an image on the white background, it doesn't capture the eye so much as a lifestyle image does, right? So you can get a higher click-through rate, more people clicking, just based on the type of life of imagery that they see here, right? Again, think in terms of like a, a, a Facebook or an Instagram feed, right? You just white background, you can scroll right past it, something more colorful, more lively, I'm more likely to click. You also want to make sure we have some reviews here. Boom. So I'd be interested to see what your top seller is, right? But one, one, I won't say a trap, but one frequently made mistake when it comes to designs or print on demand style is when we, when we almost overly rely on the name of our brand versus the actual design right? Nike is a recognizable brand, right? We're not necessarily recognizable brands yet. So it's the term saltwater redneck, it kind of speaks identity wise. So this could kind of work, but you'll find designs that, designs that highlight maybe the design itself and then have more statements that speak to things that they care about versus dedicating a lot of energy into just the name of the brand, you'll find better results and better feedback on your designs themselves. Because again, the whole point of a design is to be able to stop someone and say, hey, that's me. Hey, I like that, right? Folks that aren't already doing business with you don't necessarily care as much about the, the brand Saltwater Redneck as having a design that speaks to them and gets them excited, right? So keep that in mind as far as your designs go. When it comes to your product page, I do like that we are giving them estimated delivery timeframes, right? But when do I need to order to get it by this time, right? Leverage this as an opportunity to increase urgency, right? We also want to, don't want to give folks too many calls to action. And this is a mistake I see a lot of brands make, right? Again, point of your product page is to do one thing and one thing only, one thing and one thing only, one thing and one thing only, get that person to add it to cart. If it does that, the product page did its job. You want them out of a hundred people, how many can you get to do the one action you want them to take, add to cart. The more options you give someone besides the thing you really want them to do, the more you dilute your results. So 
instead of going to buy with PayPal, which they would do at checkout, or more payment options, which they'll do at checkout, focus them on doing the number one thing you want them to do. Definitely not share. I don't want someone, you know, heading off to someplace different, sharing out like, right? Don't don't distract them. Keep them focused on what you want them to do. Now, you have a significant opportunity on a product page like this also to sell them more stuff. Don't ever just sell someone one thing. What type of objects could go along with a shirt like this, right? What other products could we potentially cross sell them on a product page, right? What would go along with a shirt like this? right? Let's, this is how you increase your average order value and make your customers more valuable to you is taking the opportunity to cross sell them additional products, right? Additional products, get your average order value up. And that's going to give you more profit and revenue from every single customer that we get. So when it comes to even getting trafficked for a brand like this, right? Again, if you're thinking in terms of running ads, or even if you were just sharing on social media to capture eyeballs, right? You want to think in terms of what designs, what is going to stand out in a feed? Because you could vary these type of seafaring conservatives, right? Are, are all over Facebook, right? Your job is to stop them in the feed. So maybe seeing a flag, that's captures our attention, but we want to think about what type of statements are capturing people or speaking to our people, right? For people that fish, people that are, you know, consider themselves rednecks, like what type of sayings, what type of lingos, like what type of things would make someone be like, oh yeah, that's me, that's me, right? So less on the brand, more on the person that you want to sell this stuff to, and that's going to help you stop them in the feed. Very, very important. But again, because of just the nature and we are fairly de defined, like you could say run ads on Facebook, you can target people that like the beach, right? You can target people from Southern states, right? You can target people that like fishing. You can target people that like surfing. You can target people that like, you know, like Fox News, like Daily Wire. You can target all of these people on Facebook. And if you find that cross section of someone that likes that, but then also happens to like, you know, the water, bang, right? Now your job is to show them a design that says, hey, that's me. They click, land on a product page, finish the job there. Potential here, but again, we want to make sure that our designs are speaking to our person, our people, and we want to make sure that our store is set up to pull someone into our sales funnel, right? Pull them in and convert them into customers. And when we do, sell them as much as we can. Major opportunity for you. All right, so I see a question. Alyssa, we have a question on this one. Yeah, so we got a question about upsells and you went into this a little bit, but the specific question was upsells are good, but should you wait until they add to cart? So it's if you're trying to cross sell someone, right? I'm going to sell you at every single point of the interaction. If I have the opportunity to help you complete the look, I have the opportunity to put some additional items in your cart along with it, and you can add them all at the same time. Absolutely, I'll do something like that. Look at Amazon. You can go to Amazon right now, and on pretty much every single product page, you're going to see a frequently bought together. Why do they do that? To increase your, ca your cart value, right? So that's more of a cross sell, right? Upselling, yeah, that's something that does, you can do in the cart, after the cart, et cetera. Cross selling, cross selling at every point. 